Mary McLeod Bethune was, at that time was Mary McLeod. She was born in Maysville, South Carolina. She was the daughter, the last daughter of 17 siblings. She was special and she was a outstanding young woman and had a lot of ability. So much so that she was trained at the Scotia Institute uh, in Barbara, Scotia, North Carolina. And she had so much prowess that she taught her brothers and sisters how to read because she realized just the power of being able to unlock the words of reading was just such a powerful thing. She went on from there to Chicago and came under the tutelage of the great evangelist Dwight L. Moody and uh, she was trained as an evangelist. Uh, and what, one of the most outstanding stories of her life was the fact that she wanted to go to Africa to be a missionary. That was her magnificent obsession. But because she was a woman, because she was a black woman, she was not allowed to achieve her goal. She was about 25 years old, around the 1900 at the turn of the century, and it because she was a woman. And that was seen as a woman who was a pastor of a church. And you can imagine a hundred years later what that's like and what it was like then a hundred years ago. So as a result, she came down from Chicago into a place called Augusta, Georgia, and she was trained further by a lady, another black lady, a powerful black lady named Lucy Laney. And from there, she moved from Lucy Laney down into Palatka Hastings. Hastings Palatka was a migrant kind of camp. And right around that time, something was happening over in the part of Jacksonville. There was a man called Henry Flagler, the richest man in America at that time. He and his partner, John D. Rockefeller, had just made a fortune with the Standard Oil Company. And Henry Flagler had moved to Jacksonville and subsequently to St. Augustine. And his great idea was the building of a railroad that would stretch from Jacksonville all the way to Miami and further to Key West. And at that time, the way you made money and always make money even today, if you can cut down labor costs, you can make a fortune. Well, guess what? The greatest source of cheap labor at that time was the newly emancipated black man. And so what happened, they, uh, Henry Flagler found a lot of black men to help him build his railroad, which would be known as the Florida East Coast Railroad. Well, Mary McLeod was over in Hastings, Florida. And a Methodist minister from Jacksonville told her that the, the daughters associated with the railroad men, the black railroad men, were just running willy-nilly around. As a result, it might be an opportunity for her to start a school. So she would come over and find the opportunity to start a school. Another very significant thing was happening in black America as well. And that was, there was a debate going on between two black titans. One was named Booker T. Washington and the other was named W.E.B. Du Bois. This was happening right around the turn of the century. Both these men were trying to make their positions known about what would be the fate of the black man in America. W.E. Du Bois came from the philosophy of training the talented 10th. By that he meant that if you train 10%, the top 10%, then they would then in turn train the rest. Booker T took the opposite position where he was, was much more utilitarian and focused in terms of training the person with the work of the hand. Because America was, for all intents and purposes, a very agrarian society, very much agriculturally oriented. And so he came along with this idea of the head, the heart, the hand. 
Well, guess what? Booker T won the debate in the South. And what you have, if you ever take a good look at the logo of Bethune-Cookman College, Bethune-Cookman University, you will see the influence of Bethune by Booker T. Washington. You'll see the head, the heart, and the hand. If you're ever on the campus, take a good look when you come into the cafeteria. There's a large black and white photo of Mary McLeod Bethune in the very early, early days of the school. And it shows her with some young black girls and they, she was training them to be homemakers because that was the role of the black woman then. My point is, we have come a long ways at Bethune-Cookman University, from, but we have not gotten away from the, our raison d'etre, our reason for being. There is a line in the sacred alma mater of our beloved Bethune-Cookman University that says, Thou art the answered prayer of a dream. This dream was given to a great woman in a moment of interaction with the Holy Spirit. That dream lives on this day. Mary McLeod Bethune in 1920 inspired a group of black preachers in a time when the average black preacher could neither read nor write. And she combined their passion for preaching and serving with their courage and their will to learn. That philosophy still permeates the grounds of our historic university today. Ask yourself this important question. Am I the answered prayer of a dream? If so, then now is the time to seek admission into the Master of Arts in Christian Ministry at the great Bethune-Cookman University. But my friends, I'm so glad to make this invitation to you to join us for one of the most exciting things that is happening in America today the Bethune-Cookman University School of Religion.